In the year 2000, I lived in Moscow and divided my time between finishing my master's degree program in linguistics and earning my living as a teacher and interpreter in that pricey city. One day I posted an ad on a website for expatriates, advertising my services as a Russian tutor. I almost immediately heard from a Scotsman called Fred, who informed me he had just recently moved to Moscow for work and was planning to stay a while. I let him know I preferred meeting at a public place first, and he suggested an internet cafe in downtown Moscow that I attended a lot anyway to check my email, because it was only the first year of the 21st century. <laughs> he had sent me some of his grainy webcam pictures, so he was pretty easy to recognize. With his dark features, he didn't seem to be Scottish, so I asked him about his origins once we ordered our coffees and started chatting. He seemed to be a bit annoyed by the question. I'm part Greek, part Scottish. Oh, okay, that explained the dark features, I guess. When I asked him about his job, he briefly mentioned he was a computer guy, but he didn't elaborate on that. He didn't seem to give out any weird vibes, so I agreed to come to his apartment for our first class, as I was doing with all my students. The only thing that really stood out for me in his office room uh, that was that giant pile of computers on top of each other including some fancy laptops I had never seen in my life. Understandably curious, I asked about it. He dryly explained he was just repairing some of them and quickly shut the door. The first three, four lessons went well, and we also started having a cup of tea after class and talking about our lives. That's when I found out we loved the same bar in Moscow called Boar House, where I used to go dancing at least once a week. The place was always packed, so even if our path had crossed there earlier, we never noticed each other. After one of the lessons, Fred suggested we go get a couple of drinks at that bar, and I didn't mind going to the same old place. Sim, the bartender working that night, knew him very well, because he smiled at Fred, but gave me a weird stare for some reason. A live band was playing, so at some point Fred and I couldn't talk anymore. So we started writing messages to each other in my notebook that I used for our classes. After each of us had three drinks, he suddenly grabbed my notebook and was writing in it for a while. I was quite taken aback to read what he had scribbled there. Katya, I have to go away for a month, but when I come back, I would actually like to date you. I really like you. And I don't have to do Russian classes anymore. I realized I can survive in Moscow okay with just English. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't help blushing and staring at him in amazement because I saw him as my student and not as a potential date. That kind of came out of nowhere. I had no idea he liked me. He told me he was born in 1969, so okay, just seven years older than I. Not bad looking either, especially after all these drinks we had. <laughs> I still got myself together and told him I had to think about it. I didn't have a lot of dating experience and wanted to proceed slowly. When he came, when he came back a month later, his nose looked quite different, much thinner. I had a nose job back in Scotland, he confessed. I don't like looking Greek. That reminds me of my mom, who abandoned me in an orphanage when I was six, and then she killed herself anyway, and I was adopted by some kind Canadians. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I also felt like I missed him in that month. My dad was diagnosed with cancer while Fred was gone, so I was shattered and really needed positive emotions. Plus, being an empathic person, I felt so awful about his family history and how much he had to go through. I guess such stories make young, na young naive girls like I used to be attracted to this kind of men because they feel like they can make them happy and heal their wounds. I agreed to go on a date with him to see if it could develop into something. We had dinner out one night and then hit our favorite bar. It was another noisy evening, so I whipped out the notebook again and we began writing to each other while sipping drinks. At some point, he walked away to the restroom. He grabbed his keys and wallet, but his passport remained on his chair. I opened it. The birth date was stated as 1964. Oh. Five years more is not much difference in a person's life. Why lie about it? When he came back, I broached the subject right away. It was dark and we were writing without looking into each other's eyes. So when he wrote that the passport agency made a mistake, I for some reason believed it. He just seemed trustworthy since despite having quite a difficult childhood, he was able to become successful. 
However, I couldn't believe my eyes when I went on the good old expat site later to post another ad looking for students and noticed that Fred was commenting on pictures of girls posting personal ads. At first, all I felt was jealousy. At the same time, I thought to myself that it was only our first date and we didn't even do anything, so there was not much to worry about. The second date was fun, but not even eventful. We just ate and went to see a movie. Fred was taking his time to arrange our third date, so me and my friend Lena went out dancing to our favorite bar house. The Russian bartender who had given me a weird stare when I was there with Fred was working that day too, so I decided to ask a couple questions. What he told me didn't sit right with me at all. Turned out Fred was a regular, coming at least twice a week and oftentimes leaving with girls who seemed to be prostitutes. <laughs> Lena felt sympathetic to my plight and suggested posi posting a personal ad on the expat site looking for a guy and specifying she loves that bar to see if Fred falls for it. <laughs> sure enough, Fred took the bait immediately and wrote to Lena that he wasn't looking for anything serious and was ready to pay for sex. My friend, being a hot blonde, was used to men's attention, but not to this salacious kind. She felt deeply offended. We worked out a plan. <laughs> She'd meet him at the bar pretending to be a prostitute, and I'd jump out at them after 15 minutes <laughs> when he would be ready to take her home. <laughs> On the actual day, I texted him just for fun to ask when I could see him again, and he said he was too busy with work. Yeah, right. Like I didn't know what was happening. Lena and I showed up at the bar early. I hid at the restroom, and within seven minutes I received her panicky text. He already wants to go. He bought me a shot, not even a real drink. My blood boiled. I ran out of the restroom and stopped right in front of him. Bastard, Lena and I screamed. What a waste of time, I added, livid. I looked at him in disgust, and we both walked out. Wow, that dude is gross. He started pointing at me right away. How didn't you see that he was fishing, hung out with him for a while? He even lied about his date of birth, exclaimed my friend. <laughs> I was just huffing and puffing and fighting tears, angry with myself for being naive. Despite being 23, I only dated two guys. I was nerdy and didn't have confidence in my teens. So I just didn't learn to figure out men yet. Fred wrote to us both next day and invited us to lunch to apologize. <laughs> he also brought us both gifts, handheld electronic translators, knowing we both were language students. He had, he had sorry about 10 times. I'm sorry, Katya, you're a good girl, and I guess I wanted to try something more normal. But I always get <laughs> sidetracked because Moscow has so much to offer. Can we stay friends? Without an answer, we dryly thanked him for dinner, grabbed our gifts, and walked out. I had no desire to see Fred after that. However, he texted me once in a while, inquiring about my life. I was always a bit dry with him, and if I agreed to meet him, it would only be if I was out with my other friends. One day we went out to a nightclub and saw Fred talking to a tall, blonde woman, holding two big books in her hands. It's like these massive volumes didn't belong in that place. I suddenly felt like being sarcastic with him. Hey. Long time no see. Bringing home intellectual prostitutes now? <laughs> he chuckled but sounded offended. She's not a prostitute. I'm trying to do better now. She's actually a student in economics and came here after school and work. I bit my lip. I was trying not to burst out laughing in his face. Just be careful who you bring home. I warned him and walked away. The next day my phone rang at 10 a.m. when I was still asleep after dancing the whole night. It was Fred, except he wasn't talking in his usual cheerful manner, but sobbing. I froze, because I had never even seen him shed a tear. Katya, you were so right. Why did you not stop me from bringing this woman home? <laughs> she roofed my drink and stole my passport and all my cash. She too put too much shit in my wine, and my heart is jumping out of my chest. Please, help me. I'm just human. So my first reaction was a bit of schadenfreude, but then I couldn't leave the poor stupid guy without help, even though I had warned him. When we met downtown, he looked like crap, with black circles around his eyes. I didn't feel like sh I should rub it in and chastise him, so I just quietly suggested that hopefully he had learned his lesson. He hung his head in shame. Fred asked me to lie for him at the police station, 
so he could get a new passport from the UK consulate. He was worried about a humiliating investigation into his salacious hobby. He made up a story about being beaten up near his building by two guys who robbed him. And I interpreted it into Russian. The cops filled out a report and let him go with a letter to his consulate to have an expedited passport reissued. After that, we were walking down the street in silence. Can I offer you a drink for your help? He said meekly. No, and never ask me to lie for you again. Learn your fucking lesson. I still want to do something for you or for your dad if you let me. He knew my dad had cancer, advanced stage, and needed a laptop to work from his bed. Fred offered one and I accepted it. Fred and I never saw each other again. I moved to the US just a couple years later. And one day, much later, I stumbled upon an article stati stating Fred's real full name and occupation. Turned out he was actually half Indian, not Greek. And as a teenager, he was already a talented programmer who at some point hacked into the FBI network. Whoa. When caught, he was offered work for some clearance projects in exchange for not going to jail. Thank you. That is Katya Duft, everybody.